Howdy folks and welcome to the Singalodeon Super K Portable Hi-Fi Stereo Karaoke Country. That's right, you have entered karaoke country where in this country we're not using CD plus G graphic CDs, we're going to use graphic cassettes. That's right, every cassette that you see here pictured has been encoded with a digital audio track that provides the lyrics to the songs for output on a television so that as you're listening to the music you can sing along to the lyrics on the screen. All of these tapes are Super K tapes. Now they work with any audio player as you can see here on the top. Works with any audio player or any cassette player. The lyrics are also included in this. So there are four tracks on this audio cassette, maybe three, but at least four. There is a stereo audio track that has the music, it has these particular titles on it, and then it has two tracks running in the background alongside the audio that you don't hear that contain the digital encoding for the lyrics. So in a moment, we're going to demonstrate this unit, see how it runs, and then we're going to take the back panel off so you can see what's going on on the inside of this amazing Chinese produced instrument from 1994. Now don't be fooled by the label on this fine instrument right here. It says portable hi-fi stereo karaoke. Now, if you're watching this for the first time and you say, what is karaoke? Well, karaoke is simply a soundtrack to a song that is had the lyrics removed or it never had lyrics in the first place for you to sing along with and become a super singer rock star. But again, this particular instrument is not that finely made, but it has some fine circuitry inside to be able to interpret the digital track from this cassette into lyrics that come on screen. So that adds a level of sophistication to it. As far as the features go, we have a big old volume control right here. And then next to it, we have a three band graphic equalizer. So we have bass, mid and treble that can be turned left to right here. We have a balance control, a pitch control, echo, two mic input volumes, a mic one and a mic two input there. As far as the decks go up top, we have one that plays back only and one that plays back and records. So you can actually dub cassettes on this unit as well. And again, the manufacturer is Lone Star. So um, Lone Star was not exactly the prime uh, manufacturer of high quality audio equipment, but it was probably overpriced at its time when it was introduced and uh, it got the job done. And for the most part, most people probably didn't care that it wasn't like a techniques or a pioneer system. Now, as far as the speaker configuration goes, there's a little bit of a ported uh, thingy that goes on down here. So it's, I guess, slightly ported. Then you have a woofer in the middle and then two tweeters here on the sides. So the sound quality is decent for a, a cassette player, not too bad at all. The other thing that's interesting is that RCA was apparently behind the manufacturing of the audio cassettes for this system. And it has five songs with the guide vocals followed by five without guide vocals. So you get uh, the same song twice on each cassette and you can't play side B. If you turn the cassette over and look on this side, it says manufactured under license from Micro W Corporation and Data Conversion Company incorporated under US patent number and other patents or patent applications pending or issued worldwide. And a tiny note right here that says side B does not play. So what happens when you put in a tape and play it on side B. Well, let me show you. When I was at the store and attempted to try out this unit, I put in a cassette and I heard this sound. So at that point, I thought there must be something really wrong with this unit for it to be making noises like that without music coming out. Well, then I brought the cassette home and put it in my home cassette player on side B accidentally. 
and discovered that it made the exact same sound. So then I realized, you know what, maybe the karaoke machine does work. So I went back to the store and purchased the karaoke machine and it did work. So let's take a look at the back panel. On the back of the unit here, you'll notice some interesting inputs and outputs. Actually, the only input is where the antenna can be put in. So you can run your TV antenna from your, I guess your aerial or your rabbit ears into there, and then it will become a pass-through through the RF modulator that's inside. But the RF modulator does uh, channel three or channel four. I've got it on channel four here. And then strangely enough, there is a MIDI output here. Now I'm not sure what that would output simply because MIDI is a, um, a standard for musical instruments and I would assume that this unit is not outputting music. So it's possible that it would be sending the text information via a MIDI port that you could run into uh, some other sound system or uh, some other MIDI based system. The only other jacks that you'll see here are these, and these are the speaker output jacks. And oddly enough, they are RCA jacks, but you can plug external speakers in right there. Notice the tag here showing September 1994 as the manufacturing date. For those of you who are techies, and I would imagine the majority of people who subscribe to the DataBits channel are techies, You'll notice here that this audio head is a four track audio head. There are four stripes on the head that indicate the four tracks that it can pick up from the tape. And that would indicate that two of the tracks are picked up simultaneously from the head as they are going across along with the music. So two tracks for music, two tracks for the data that becomes the lyrics on the screen. Over here on the playback and record deck, you'll see here that this is only a two track head. And I would imagine that is because the recordings that you can make of your own to share with family and friends, you would only need two tracks. You would only need the stereo. However, that does mean that the right deck is the only one that plays the karaoke along with the lyrics. One of the interesting sections of this unit is the microphone section. As I showed you in the beginning, it has two separate volume controls for mics, but it also has a echo control. Now, it may need new capacitors. If it does, it's not going to get them before you see this video. But strangely, if you plug in a microphone, you'll hear a high-pitched squeal along with some air sound. It sounds like air coming through an air conditioner of your house. I'll go ahead and plug in the mic and show you. So you get the little popping sound there that is the echo. And if I talk through the microphone, test, 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 one, two, three, echo, echo. Yeah, there's our, there's our reverb, our echo. So it's kind of annoying to me because I work in sound at uh, my church and uh, we don't hear this kind of noise and strange uh, background uh, squealing that you would hear on a professional audio system. So definitely this particular aspect of the unit needs some work. I'll go ahead and unplug that mic now. And you hear the squeal just kind of went very odd. All right, let's demonstrate what this thing looks like with a tape playing and the screen displaying the lyrics. that some of you have been waiting for and that is what do the guts of this Lone Star karaoke machine look like well 
One thing you'll notice right now is that there is one drive motor that operates both decks. If I turn this flywheel right here, you'll see that the other flywheel also turns. So we saved a good $1.50 by only having one motor in here, right? Maybe back in 1994, they were more expensive. Got to save that, uh, got to save that profit. And then this circuit board here has a bunch of components that uh, are either missing or maybe part of a revision, or perhaps were for uh, some kind of an upgraded version of this particular unit. But uh, we'll move across here so you can kind of see what's going on. Looks like there may be some uh, residue from a leaky capacitor on there, or perhaps some wax that was put on there. I'm talking about that right there. And then on the back, we had some kind of a uh, thing of aluminum foil covered paper that completely covered this computer area on the back. You'll notice that there is a couple of chips here in the middle of your screen. Those are both Motorola chips. And then there's some kind of a uh, chip there as well, probably again for the computer part. And then uh, there's a Toshiba chip right there. And then it looks like we interface with the audio from this board from this cable right here. This big, thick cable goes up inside of there, probably directly to the audio head, perhaps. So again, yeah, the, uh, the Atari-based uh, character generator. It's not really Atari, but it kind of looks like it, didn't it? Uh, that's what's uh, on this circuit board here. And again, same thing. There's, there's some uh, components there you've seen in the middle of your screen that uh, again, were not used or perhaps were there for a more elaborate model of this karaoke machine. And that will conclude this video about the Lone Star SK-104 karaoke cassette player with on-screen graphics display. Thank you for watching this video. Please share it with a friend if you thought this video was absolutely stunning. I'm sure you'll like all the other Databits videos on here as well where I attempt to find really cool, rare stuff and bring it to your attention. So please share this video with a friend, leave a comment below, click the like button, and I will see you next time.